What's up, guys? I'm driving behind a uh, CRV. It says uh, honk if honk for horny, honk, honk for grad. Someone just graduated, so I'm not gonna honk. I guess you could honk. I mean, if they're graduating from high school, they're probably horny too. But anyway, guys, what's up? It is Saturday morning. June, is it the third? June the third. We're halfway through the freaking year. If my math is correct, something like that. We're closer to Halloween than we were from Halloween. Something like that too. But I'm going to a toy show. North, North Texas, North Dallas. I can never get the name of this freaking show right. I'm sure the promoters of the show love that. North Texas Toy Show or North Dallas Toy Show? It's one of the toy shows in the northern part of Texas and or Dallas. I'm going there. I'm trying to get around these freaking crappy ass drivers. Holy frick, it's Saturday morning. Some of these people never get out of the damn house. Uh, but anyway, what am I looking for? Come on, guys. I'm looking for the same old of the same old vintage Star Wars, vintage Joes. I'm down to like 16, 17 Joes that I need. They're gonna have to be minty freaking fresh and minty freaking complete for me to buy them. Cause uh, you know what? I wanna keep collecting Joes as long as I can. And if I only have 17 freaking figures and one vehicle, the killer whale, to buy, then I gotta drag that shit out, mother frickers. Anyway guys, uh, vintage Star Wars, I don't even really have any freaking room. Cause right now, in my Star Wars D12 shelf, my vintage Star Wars D12 shelf, that mother effer is full! As you can see here, bulging at the sides. And I was gonna look for a slab. I was gonna look for a new slab, maybe a first appearance. But I got up early this morning, 6.30 in the morning on a Saturday. I'm not sure why I can't sleep in on the damn weekends. 6.30, got up in my jammies, and I uh, went upstairs, and I went to a uh, local comic shop's online website. And when I say local comic shop, it's like one of the biggest comic shops in the damn world. Mycomicshop.com. There you go. Secrets, secrets out there. Secrets out there. And I found a slab. I found a new slab. So you will see that when I get back to the house key, and I show you the whole portion of this vid. So uh, I'm probably not gonna be looking for a slab while I'm there, which probably means I'm probably gonna find one that I'm looking for, which probably means that's all I'm gonna leave with. But uh, anyway, we'll see what they got. North Ta North Talus. Let's just call it that. The North Talus Toy Show. Or the North Dexus. Ooh, that sounds sexy. Sexy Dexus. Uh, anyway, guys, I don't know where I'm going. I'm drinking a lot of freaking uh, whatever this stuff, whatever's in this. Rocket fuel Celsius. That's why I'm acting like I'm on some nose candy. Some nose nachos. Anyway, I'm not on that. I'm just on Celsius and I'm high on life, guys. I will see you guys at the toy show and I'll show you guys what they got. Let's freaking go. All right, first stop. There's a uh, Jason Todd single pack. I did not even know that existed. Thought he only came in the two pack with Nightwing, but apparently he comes in uh, single pack too. And then I uh, saw these guys down here, Lone Ranger, Tonto, and then you got the Duke Boys. Duke's a hazard. Pretty cool. Uh, he said 25 each on those two, so 50 for the pair. I don't, I don't even know what they're going for, but they look pretty good. Alright, we're here at this booth. Dave Ryan's looking at this Baron Zemo. Oh. No. I could totally buy one of them. There you go. I know, but here's the ones I'm looking at: Iron Man, Cap, Daredevil, Spidey. Yeah. I'm like, whole Secret I don't, Wars. I don't really buy them unless I keep, yeah. And he's looking for holograms now, so we'll see if we can find some. I think Cap has his hologram in there. 
But uh, yeah, this is a line that I've been trying to get back into. All right, so some holograms have been located for Iron Man, Cap, and Spidey. Still working on finding the final one. Oh, there we go. Final one for Iron Man. So there's four. Four, four, and yeah. then... Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, that one's already up. I'm not worried about it. Yeah. Take that extra one. All right, made my first purchase. Bam. Got some secret wars. So I'll show you which one's the guy after the show. Is that? Funny. Which one? I sold mine. Yeah, you did? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm selling quite a bit of my McFarland figures. I know, that's kind of why I'm on the fence. This yeah. is cool, though. Even though it's which not the best that? sculpey in the world. It's just cool that it's 89 Batman. Oh, it's an nice, updated yeah. toy that is just in 6-inch. Yeah. It's really since you're you good with G.I. Joe numbers, like which ones are which? Huh? I have no freaking clue. Oh, I open mine as soon as I get them, so I, I don't know any of the numbers. I got what? Soggy? I did, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. We got some Joes, we got some bots. Here's a uh, third party uh, Devastator. I'm really debating that hot rod. Hot rod. This one here? Masterpiece? Yeah, I'm not my favorite one. Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> of Optimus Prime. All about it. Hot Rod's your favorite Transformer. Yes. I've never heard anyone say that before. He's my favorite. <laughs> but I like him because the IDW comics. Oh my god, man. That's crazy. You're welcome. <laughs> I got that on camera. You sure did. Jeff said that Hot Rod is his favorite Transformer. Transformer. Wow, that's nuts, man. He literally got Optimus Prime killed. This guy got Optimus Prime killed. <laughs> All right, here we got. Uh, here's an X Transbots cup. These look really good. Damn, those look really good. It's like masterpiece scale. Look at that. Awesome. Eighty-five. Very cool. All right, I found some uh, vintage shows. I don't think there's any. Oh, there's a tunnel rat. I might, I might look at that one. Uh, but there's some Joes here. I just picked up this guy here. But uh, look at that tunnel rat. There's also some uh, Motus in here. There's a Whiplash. All right, so here's some slabs here. This one is a spectacular number 200. The death of Green Goblin, Harry Osborn. And this one here is ASM 375. First appearance of Anne, who was in the Venom book. She becomes She-Venom, so that's pretty cool. 7550, 9490. All right, guys, show table. And he does have at least one figure in the final 17 that I'm looking for. Oh, you're fine. He's got a Falcon. So I'm, I'm going to see if it's complete. Uh, there is a Jinx too, but she's not in my final 17. Iceberg. So, those are cool too. Zoro, Tonto with the horse, Lone Ranger with the horse. And then we got some uh, Transformers too. Let me take a look at these and show you what I find. All right, got some modern stuff here. Got some SH figure arts. There's a Mafex Billy Butcher from The Boys, which is cool. And then Mafex Spider-Man. Uh, are there any legends that I need here? I actually do need a cable. Five zero. See how much the cable is. I also need a Nightcrawler. I'm asking 75, man. I love how the Billy Butcher comes with a baby accessory. It's pretty funny. All right, we got some new NECA stuff. Let's see if there's anything I am looking for. Oh, wow, I've never seen him before. That's cool. Let's take a look at him. Look at that. 
awesome. I have not seen him before. I've seen Herman in the stores. Elf. Elvira. Grim Sword. No War Duke. Uh, anything else new? There's a leg lamp. Leg lamp. I do actually need a Fugitoid. 30 for him. <laughs> oh, good old Elvira. First time seeing this in person. This is the NECA Elliot and T on the bike. It's like uh, undersized. It looks like it's closer to, uh, I guess, six inch scale versus uh, the seven inch scale that NECA is. But uh, pretty cool. There's a nice uh, masterpiece, movie masterpiece black out there with Scorpion out. Very nice. And this watcher here, this Marvel Select watcher, got to be the best looking watcher I've ever seen. I think it's better than the Build-A-Figure Marvel Legends one, but this looks really good. 35 bucks. This thing used to go for a lot more before they reissued it, but looks good. All right, down in this tub here, I saw this Doctor Strange. I don't think I ever saw this at retail. Uh, I think this was an exclusive. Was this a Walmart exclusive? 20 bucks, not bad. It also has the uh, Comet Renette for 15. Pretty good deal. Used to have this one right here. This is the Clone Wars Attack Shuttle. 95. Seems like a pretty good price for inbox. Still can't believe that Jeff's favorite Transformer is Hot Rod. I'm gonna have to look this one up, this uh, Generation Toy. I think this is like the, uh, the one that looks kind of like super deformed. Uh, but I'll have to take a look at that. 335 for all of the constructor cons. Put the Viper pack there. Some O2 plastics up top. Procrustus. Excellent name. This is a good figure right here. This is a NECA Vasquez from Aliens. She's hard to find. He's got uh, 45 on her. She looks good. Anytime I see X-Men loose, Marvel Legends X-Men on the table, I gotta look because I'm looking for that uh, Cyclops with the X on his face. It was a Toys R Us exclusive uh, Jubilee Wave. I need that one, but uh, yeah. He's hard to find. Then a more. There's a whale incomplete. I'm sure that could be completed and uh, look very, very nice. All right, we're in an outside booth here. They have a Silverhawk Skyrunner. Looks like it's the Spanish version. Destructor. La nave de ataque de monstruos. Pretty freaking awesome. I wonder if it's complete. And I wonder how much it is. We'll have to find out. All right, I've never seen this before, but this is awesome. Can you answer me why there's no Bam Bam? Yeah, where the hell is Bam Bam? Maybe he fell out and I just like all happy he fell out. <laughs> <laughs> he gone, new kid! <laughs> and look, she's on a stool or... Nice. So safety. That's so, yeah, safe. So did you ever hear the theory yeah. on this? No. So I was reading about this and yes, I do read once in a while that Jetsons and Flintstone lived during the same uh, period of time. So the same universe? Same universe, everything. Yeah. They live on the ground because it's during apocalypse time. They're poor, yeah. so they live on the ground. Jetsons are rich and they live in the sky. Oh, so they're in the same actual time. Same time That's frame. actually really Because how cool. else do they know to use a, gra uh, a pig as a garbage disposal? Yeah. How they're supposed to use an elephant trunk as a hose, a hose, you know? I love the Flintstones. That is super cool. How much did you get that for? Oh, it's not mine. It's Dave's. Oh. I think he paid 40 for this and hold it carefully. And then make Merlin. You find some random stuff. He does good. Does anyone know what this is actually from? I think it's one of those spirit Halloween decorations. Yeah. I would oh, probably, okay. I Let's Google Pitch Because it looks like a genie. Looks like Christopher Lloyd. You know who it looks like? Model. What's the guy's name from Adam's Family, the movie? Oh, Fester. Yeah, Fester. What? Is this a drive by? Guys, you might see me on Craig's channel, not another retro channel. Today, I'm going to be all over Cincy's video. Yeah. I'm going to be running the camera work. I'll be doing all the talking. Lots of commenting. So, I know you guys are going to be super excited about this. Here we go, baby. <laughs>
It was good to hang with the boys and see the guys here at the show. And uh, I did pick up some stuff. So you pretty much saw everything while I was kind of mulling things over. You saw everything in the clips. But let me show you what I decided upon. So I got this one right here. This is a Secret Wars, Secret Wars Iron Man complete. He has the little blaster gun. He has the shield. He has all the inserts for the shield. He had 30 on this guy. He looks super, super clean. Usually uh, the arc reactor is kind of, um, the paint's rubbing on that, but this one looks pristine. Same with the uh, Secret Wars theme. I got Spidey. I got Spider-Man. He literally had like seven Spider-Mans to choose from. So I went through and I chose the one that I liked the most. They all had like tiny little paint rubs here and there, but this is the one that I liked the most. The blue was the most vibrant. He has a little rub on his toe, which doesn't bother me. If you can see it right there. And then a little bit of rub right near his uh, chesticles. But he has the shield and all the inserts. Very hard to find like all the inserts for the shield for these. Again, he has 30 on that one. And then last but not least, we have Cap. Got the Captain America Secret Wars figure. 30 on this one as well. Shield, look at that, look at that. And all the inserts. So that was 90, but he gave me a deal. I got all three for 75 bucks. He knocked it down to $25 per figure. So I could not say no to that. 75 bucks there. And then I uh, picked up a couple Joes. So again, I was at a final 17. I am now at a final 15. It's crazy. It's crazy. I've been collecting GI Joes my entire, it seems like my entire life, but you know, it started in like 82 when I was like six or seven years old. Um, and it's down to now 15 total figures before I can then call it quits on the line. Again, I'm gonna end with the killer whale. I'm, it's gonna take me some time to find a pristine killer whale complete. I want it complete. I might even go with box just to make it harder, even harder to find. But uh, that's what I'm gonna end with is the killer whale with cutter. But I got another 83 figure here. I got airborne. I like airborne. I had him as a kid. He was one of my favorite figures as a kid. Uh, I remember playing with airborne a lot. And then last but not least, the final Joe that I picked up. A lot of people don't like this guy. A lot of people kind of equate him with Hot Rod, which is Jeff's favorite. <laughs> Jeff's favorite Autobot is Hot Rod. I still can't get over that. Jeff, if you're watching, you gotta be the only dude that I know that I've ever met that Hot Rod was your favorite Autobot. That's crazy. Literally got Optimus Prime killed. Literally got him killed. Anyway, this guy, a lot of people blame for Duke almost dying, it's Falcon. Um, and he was uh, one of the 87 figures that I wanted the most. He's in the movie, obviously, and he's complete. The uh, antenna, as um, I don't know if Mike said it on video, I was talking to Mike about this, Boston Mike. He said the antenna is, uh, it's hard to find that with the backpack, but this one's complete. He has the, the shotgun, the knife, the backpack, and the antenna. So, price-wise, since I'm telling you what uh, things were listed for and what I paid for them, he had 50 on Falcon, 50 on Falcon, 30 on Airborne, so that's 80. He knocked off 10 bucks, I got him for 70, so not as big of a cost savings on these two, but I got two off the uh, list of the final 17. So, grand total, I got two hundo out uh, for my budget for this show. So I spent uh, 70 and 75, that's 145 bucks. Paid like three bucks to get in. Uh, so yeah, going home with money in my wallet, that's always a good thing. Going home happy with a smile on my face. Uh, guys, if you're watching this, uh, I'm sorry I couldn't join you at Dallas Vintage Toys. They're all headed to DVT right now, but I gotta get home. Bring my girls, bring my family some lunch, and then uh, we're going to a graduation party. So if there was anything that you saw in the footage that you would have picked up, let me know. If you think I got a good deal on these vintage figures, let me know. If there's a vintage line that you think I should start collecting, I'm obviously collecting Secret Wars now, let me know. But uh, that's it guys, so thanks for watching. I appreciate it, have fun collecting. Whoa, slow your roll. Video's not over yet. So uh, I got a little bit of a haul here. Uh, earlier in the video, I mentioned that I woke up 
at the butt crack of dawn and I went on to my comic shop.com and I bought a little Slabberuski. Well, I bought uh, another one in the meantime and I got some other comics. So I'm gonna show you those comics, but it's not just comics here. I bought a big item, a big boy item. Uh, not only is it a big price tag, it is a large, physically large item. So I'm gonna show you that one too. And then, and then we can end the video. But uh, first thing I wanna show you, I will be quick because I don't want this thing to run too damn long. First thing I'm gonna show you is the slab that I picked up, mycomicshop.com. Hell freaking yes. I'm just gonna show you. Bam. First appearance of Miles Morales. Ultimate Fallout number four. This is the second print variant cover. So this cover has uh, Miles on the cover, uh, drawn by Sarah Pacelli, who ended up being the regular artist on his series, the Ultimate Comics, Miles Morales Spider-Man. So I really like this cover. It is the second print. It's a variant second print. Again, Pacelli cover. It's a nine four. First appearance of Miles Morales. Into the Spider-Verse, across the Spider-Verse, two amazing movies. I wanted to have the first appearance of Miles. This is freaking amazing. I love it. So that was the one that I picked up early in the morning. And then I saw across the Spider-Verse and I figured, you know what? Might as well pick this one up right here. It's another 9-4, guys. It's another 9-4, it's another slab. It's another Spider-Man comic book. Bam. Spider-Man 2099, number one, a 9-4. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Origin of Miguel O'Hara. Spider-Man 2099. Not the first appearance. The first appearance was in like issue 360 something. I forgot. I forgot. It's on the list. It's definitely one of the ones I want to pick up. I want the first appearance of Spidey 2099, but this is pretty damn cool too. So bam, another slab, two slabs, two new slabs. And then I got a little stack of Ruski here. There's like a few modern comics and then there's a bunch, a bunch of vintage comic books here. So we're gonna start with the modern Avengers number one. It's a facsimile, Avengers number one, because I probably can't afford a, a real number one. This is cool because it actually has the ads from whenever the frick this came out, the 60s, early 60s. I forgot when this came out. But Avengers number one, very nice. Invincible Iron Man number one, another book that's uh, gonna be very, very pricey if I was to buy the actual version. So I got this one right here. Sorry for the excessive gum chewing, by the way. I um, I found some big league chew. I found some big league chew. A gum I used to chew the frick out of when I was a kid. And um, I am enjoying to this day. So I've been chewing the shiz out of it. Another modern comic book, variant cover, Floating Heads. If you were around in the 80s, you collected comic books in the 80s, you know what Floating Heads are. They used to show up in the top left-hand corner of the comic book. They used to show you who's in the comic book, but this is Avengers uh, number one. New number one. I don't know what freaking series of the Avengers this is, but it's a new number one. Green Arrow number two. This is the, uh, is it David Nakayama? Variant, there's Red Arrow, pretty badass. Dawn of DC Titans, number one. Titans, not Teen Titans anymore. They're all grown up, but it's the original team. Pretty badass, pretty, well, not the original team because they got uh, Kid Flash in there. Is he, he's, not, he's no longer Kid. Is that Wally West? I think that's Wally West, is not is it not? I don't know, I'm gonna have to read it and find out. All right, those are the modern books. The rest of these are all vintage books. Starting with this one right here, Eastman and Laird's TMNT number eight, my friends. There is Renette, or Renee, however you wanna pronounce her name. I call her Renette because there's a T at the end of her name. I don't know if it's a silent T, but she's wearing blue. And the one that we are finding in stores is wearing red. The blue one apparently was like an exclusive. I wish they would reissue the blue one because that's the one that's on the freaking cover here. This one I've been after for a freaking time, okay? Uh, finally got it. 
It is a TMNT book 19, number 19. I remember buying this off of a, a spinner rack at a record store that was a couple miles from my house. Rode my bike to it. I was 13, 13 years old, almost 14. And I, uh, it was the summer of TMNT, or maybe it was the spring of TMNT. I don't know, whatever the frick it was. I was into this book. I was really excited for it. And here you go, Return to New York. Freaking awesome. I love, I love this three issue arc. So freaking awesome. This is where you get like the mutant shredders and this is where you get the, the new looks of the turtles um, that we're seeing in that four pack that's gonna be hitting target here soon. Pretty freaking sweet. Um, and then I got some Joe books. So my, I'm down to just a, a in the teens for my Joe figures, but you know what? I'm gonna replace that with I'm gonna start collecting the Joe books because I used to love collecting these Joe books when I was a kid. Love it. And uh, I'm gonna get issues like one through, I think I ended in like the 60s. So maybe I'll do one through 60. Hell freaking yes, I love that idea. We're gonna start with this one right here. G.I. Joe number five. Number five. Awesome. I already got it in a Mylar. G.I. Joe number now, I was after this book a lot. I was like looking for this book a lot. It was pricey, pricier back then in the 80s when I was looking for it. But the origin of Snake Eyes, issue 26. G.I. Joe issue 26. It was a two issue arc. And you know what? I got the second issue in that arc too. Issue 27, origin of Snake Eyes. This book right here, no lie, was one of my favorite comic books as a kid. I used to reread this issue a lot. I love the cover, I love the interior art, I love the storyline. It's a badass action-packed issue. G.I. Joe number 29, look at that cover. Freaking Destro, Roadblock, blocking it, Duke's down there. Man, that's a badass cover. Freaking love this book. The issue right after that, G.I. Joe number 30, I believe this is the first appearance of the Dreadnoughts. Hell yes. So awesome. So freaking awesome. Back then, if I remember correctly, the figures would come out and simultaneously we'd see ads on television. Ads on television for single issues of comic books. That's how comic books were back then, guys. If you weren't out alive in the 80s. And then this one right here, I believe this is the next issue. This might be All Fall Down. This was another one of my favorite, favorite issues. I believe this one took place in like a cabin, airborne, Snake Eyes, uh, Destro. Snake Eyes was severely outmanned and outgunned, but man, bringing back some serious memories. So building my Joe comic book collection is going to be a lot of fun. I cannot wait, I cannot wait. All right, and now for the big boy item. This is a big ass item. Um, and what sold me on this one was honestly the trailers for the movie. Seeing the trailers for the movie The Flash, um, just seeing the Batwing, seeing it being lowered down in the trailer, seeing Keaton in it, seeing him freaking jumping out of it and soaring down with nothing but his cape, gliding down. I had to get this. It's the McFarlane Toys, gold label. It's a big boy, it's heavy. Let's go, baby. How freaking yes. The Batwing. The big McFarlane Toys gold label Batwing. Let's go. I usually don't like hang vehicles or anything like that from the wall, but this one specifically comes with a wall mount. It's got like a Batman symbol with two like bars and uh, I'm gonna anchor it into the wall. It's gonna go right next to this big white shelf here because I got my McFarlane toys on there. This is gonna be so cool. This is gonna be so, so awesome. There's a big like open space here. So I'm gonna put the Batwing there. I'm gonna put some comic book pages that are framed over that. I don't know, I need to display these slabs, but anyway, that was the haul. Holy frick, I went 10 minutes. I don't know how this is gonna be after I edit it, but uh, there you go, guys. Wanted to keep it short and sweet. Back to you, Cincy, for the uh, ending remarks. See you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Have fun collecting. I'll see you around the corner and adios for now.